so maybe you did get together uh, with the fourth. Maybe um, there were some large gatherings. I'll bet there were. Uh, maybe at some point with family and or friends, things didn't go just quite right on the 4th of July in terms of, well, interpersonal relations. You know what I mean. Uh, and some people haven't been getting together for a year and a half. So maybe this was the first one. A lot of maybes here. But it, perhaps it fits your situation. Could be the first time in a while uh, getting together. People, you know, are enjoying food. They're enjoying beverages. Somebody might say something they think is funny. The other person doesn't think it's so funny. It's a family. You're going to see them again. How do you deal with this? How do you, I mean, how do you talk and communicate with another loved one who, you know, flat out hurts you, hurts your feelings? Uh, the good doctor is stepping in today, Dr. John Braccio, uh, Ph.D., Regional Psychological Services in East Lansing at drjohnbeasonboy.com for all the podcasts. Good morning, sir. Welcome post fourth and fifth. Well, good morning to you, my friend. And I might it is very difficult when you do have a loved one who has said a hurtful thing to you. There's no question. And we're dealing in a situation we're talking here about when two people really do really care for each other. And it's hard because it hurts your feelings. It could hurt you a lot. And often the first reactions could be lashing out in anger or going into a show and not wanting to talk. And obviously neither of these reactions is effective over time. The important thing is you have to be able to have communication Mm -hmm. allows each person the opportunity to best solve the problem together. And it's it's just a, it's a hard process. I, I deal with this a lot in my work. I think just in general, everyday life. And you're right. Now that people are seeing each other more and more, there's going to be more of these happening. And I think the, the good advice to a person who's hurt is to, in a caring way, bring up the concern to mm -hmm. the person and mention how they feel, not attacking the other person, and really um, bring up the concern and even give a solution, you know, in a way that can lead to really some discussion. This does allow the person who hopefully inadvertently was hurtful to have the opportunity to help in any problem-solving ready that can be done. And if you think about it, Dave, typical examples would be forgetting a birthday or important date, making plans and not considering desires or feelings of the loved one, saying words or statements that are sarcastic and mean-spirited. And this seems, it seems to happen a lot, I might add. Not hmm. being available in times of need, not caring for the feelings of the person, and not really being tuned into the person when there's an emotional need for really discussion and understanding. And, and, and on and on and on and on. It depends on the relationship, depends on who the loved one is. But there's really a lot of pain when loved okay. ones hurt each other. And so we really, as a, as a team, have to be able to solve things. But the person who's hurt is best resolving things, not by getting angry or going into the, you know, the clam or the quiet, you know, won't talk. But coming forward, giving personal feelings, I feel this way, I statements, and then even throwing out a possible solution. Example, sarcasm. If someone really says something that they think is funny, but you don't. And this happens a lot. I think you can sure. mention, you know, it hurts my feet. I feel bad when you make these comments. When this happens, I feel this way. And it would just be better if things were not said that way or something like that. Yeah. Rather than you're an idiot, you're you're disrespectful, disgusting, right. I'm angry. I mean, that tends not to get very far. Hmm. You know, you mentioned something there, uh, kind of, you know, the long, quiet spell, the, the, the silent treatment problem with that is and i take this from my own extended family sometimes that lasts years and you know we always say in this world is a mortal coil before we shed it tomorrow is not promised think about that i mean you're going to be give the silent yes. treatment for years this is i think this is kind of a regular deal in families because i've heard it numerous times with friends oh this aunt hasn't talked to this cousin since 1979 i i mean and i'm like why Oh, well, somebody said something at Thanksgiving. It just didn't go over right. Ugh. Ouch. I, but this is real common. You don't want to make the silent treatment last forever. Well, that does happen, Dave. You know, I've seen it in 
my extended good Italian family and grandparents. Sure. Some of those have gone on. Yep. I see it maybe less now, but people can do that or they never get over something. Well, I think it's best to bring out the concern um, and, and be able to talk about it. Now, there's some people you're best just to stay away as much as you can. You know, there's some toxic people to you. They can be family members. They can be friends, coworkers. That yeah, we've talked about that before. We, we've got, we yeah, we've gotten into that before, the toxic personality. You know, that's different. Because you said earlier inadvertent. I think inadvertent it, happens a lot in family gatherings, and but people take it and maybe build it into something bigger, and then it becomes maybe something bigger, and that's troublesome. Well, that well, that is true, and, and often it's statements, or or not taking the other person into account, or volunteering somebody, yeah. doing things, but and often not being available, whether it's personally, or if some you know someone says they're going to help you, or if someone says you know if you're really having a bad day, we can talk, and then the person really is not is not available. It, 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 it I, I do find a lot of comments. Like someone could say, "Oh, she's a delightful idiot." Okay, I mean, <laughs> you know that 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 actually could ouch. be even said in a yes, ouch, in a loving way. Or I don't know if I've ever really loved anybody. It's just kind of a philosophical statement. And all of a sudden, the person you're with is someone that you've said you love a thousand times. Okay, in the last <laughs> last year. Oops. So these are Oops. <laughs> well, these, these, well, these are the things that happen for getting birthdays, for getting mm. anniversaries, for getting things, or making plans. Honey, we're going to spend the weekend with the clown or the whoever family, the Mary family, the whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Didn't talk to the person. The person has no desire to be going. Doesn't feel well, but all of a sudden is committed because the the, the partner or spouse decided to do something. And they, so these right. are common everyday things. And this is when there's really the need to be able to bring things up with I statement how I feel and then come up with a solution, even if there's not for this particular one coming up, that, that, that it doesn't happen again over and over and over again, because that tends to be what happens when you get people that, that will become a clam or blow up and get angry. These, these, these strategies may work temporarily when people are hurt, upset, but in the long run, they tend to damage and even destroy and end relationships. So it's really best to find uh, just a way to be able to talk and communicate. And really, one of them is just staying with how I feel and then even yeah. coming up with an idea and then lead to try to have good discussion. Can another family member help um, me? I mean, if, if, Aunt, if Aunt Blabby and, and Cousin Claire are, are, you know, one of them told the other that your chicken salad recipe at the picnic was just no good this year, and the feelings are really bruised about that because you used to say you loved it. Um, can another family member help mediate, or do people need to solve this amongst themselves? Well, it depends. It depends on the family member. If you have, if you have a trusted person that can talk to the other person and to you, you know, it, it can be helpful. It can be a family member. It can be okay. clergy if it depends on things getting involved. It can be a parent. It can be a brother, sister. Sure, it can be a trusted friend. It can be really. Or you can be a psychologist, you know, a therapist, somebody who you can bring in. Depends on the level of the problem. Now, you normally, if it's over food, which, of course, you and I coming from a good Italian family, that often the level of the sugo, the sauce, you know, the level of the food could be, you know, people take things pretty personally when it comes to their food. So what I think yes, is indeed. If, you can't, if, you can't, if you can't solve it yourself, it is important if you can find a mediator who, who is not just... Um, you know, a, a gossip, but someone who can be helpful because really a lot of the, the breakdowns that people have in communication to someone else seem very small, but they're not small to the people that are involved. And another one is when another problem is when you have someone who doesn't see the problem. Like, sure, I called you, you know, uh, an idiot, but I didn't mean you were an idiot. I just, you know, it's just it's kind of a word of endearment to which the person says, well, I don't like the name idiot. I don't like it. I don't like you saying it. I feel bad when it's said in front of other people. Can we kind of have an agreement that we're not going to use that word? And that's that's something that people can talk about. And that's a common thing, by the way, Dave. People just make statements and and. And they could be painful, hurtful. The person thinks they're funny. This is one of the problems with sarcasm or 
people saying statements that don't come across as funny. Just as an example, that's more common than you might think, statements that really are hurtful, painful to the person. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of other ones that I've, you know, that I, that I've mentioned here, not being available, not being so, willing to talk. Right. So and when one another, person I, ends up apologizing, though, which is going to happen, hopefully, if a person has called someone else, you know, an idiot in a family setting, um, they're going to have to mean it. It's going to have to be legit, and and hopefully it's not going to take forever to get one, the apology, and then hopefully both parties can can move on. But um, but it's tricky, right? It's actually it's it's actually very tricky, particularly if you have persons that see things very differently. Like, oh, it's really no big deal. This is really no big. Deal. Okay, I'll take a look. Yeah, at that's it. the problem. I think it's right? in, well, it is important that yeah. the person receiving the message is aware that it, it really isn't for them to be determining the level of hurt that a person may have. Right. They have to they have to compromise and try to sort things out and try to tune in to the other person. This is what what hopefully happens when people live a life together. They learn how to accommodate. They learn how to understand. They learn how to learn that loving can mean different things, and the main thing is the person that you love, you want yeah. to be loving them mm. in a way that, that that's important to them. Mm. You know, again, uh, to close here, I've seen this happen uh, over what would seem to be, if I were to relate my own extended family uh, situation, you would say, well, that's the most trivial. I, it seems like it is, but how people interpret things, it's very different, individual to individual. I know you would would back me on that. So you've, you've got to be careful. And if you know your words have caused or your actions have caused a problem uh, with a, another one, a loved one, uh, you've got to go, you've got to make those amends. You expect that if you've been slighted, if you've done the sliding, you, you've got to step in and make something happen or hopefully work with another person, a trusted family member uh, to mediate or maybe even outside the family circle. The good doctor is here. Dr. John Braccio, PhD, Regional Psychological Services of East Lansing. You can find all the podcasts at drjohnb.com. It's always good to talk to you, my friend, even after. I hope you had a wonderful uh, Independence Day 2021. Well, did with 30 family members. So wow. I, call that a, I call that a good Woo-hoo. get-together. So, no and kidding. by the way, a good, good summation you gave of our talk today, Dave. So anyway... Look forward to talking to you next week and have, a, to have that. an enjoyable week. Absolutely. Bye-bye. You too. John Braccio, drjohnb.com, 1320. This is WILS.